Okay, it's time to get some cars fixed and on the road. There's only a few cars of mine which are actually on the road at the minute. One of them, the Lamborghini. The Maserati is still, well, absolutely filthy and off the road at the minute because of this damage here, which you saw in the previous video. The GT86 is on the road. The C63, well, we'll get to that in the next video. But today, we're on the Audi S3, which I bought for my friend Liam. Now we've got to the point now where this car should start and move around of its own accord. But we're still a fair bit away from actually getting this car back on the road and being drivable. It's still absolutely disgusting in here and well, all the airbags are gone. First time, come on. Let's go. Now the S3 still has a fair amount of teething issues. We can't run it up to temperature yet because it doesn't hold coolant. It idles fine, but as soon as you rev it and then it comes back down on the revs, it starts to misfire, which we think is maybe something to do with the coding. And then there's the obvious stuff like the wing not being mounted properly yet, the grill which we decided we was gonna get rid of, washer jets not being put in, and a bunch of other stuff. So let's get this thing inside and start the work. Knock it, boots brown no on Miley. When I pop by like a polished, briefcase, no wallet. Just blew a bang like Scotsman, killed that. In the AM, going real fast. UK, honey, at the drill that bonds me. Bailed out, no confidence. Okay, so we've got a few things to do whilst the bumper is off. One of them is the headlight, and there's a few more. So in the last video, when I fitted the RSV style front bumper, we figured out that the foam bar, which sat in front of the crash bar, no longer fits because that bumper is a slightly different shape than the stock one. And on that foam bar, there was two crash sensors, one there and then one at the other side. I've had to remount these just behind the crash bar just there. They will still do the job as they would. But I'll wait for an Audi specialist to tell me why I can't do that. But with that done, I can move on to the headlight. I actually thought that this was working, but then when I bought a new headlight, we're seeing that the sort of LED strip lights along the top and the bottom, whereas the one that was on the car, well, it doesn't work on the bottom. After doing a bit of research on the S3s, it turns out this is quite a common problem, and the LED actually burns out, and there's no way of fixing it unless you just buy a new headlight. So, 500 pound later, and I have a new driver's side headlight. I just hope that this one works. So removing the headlight is pretty easy once you've got the bumper off. There's a few bolts on the top and just one underneath. Now with the headlight off, I've got to change over all the ballast off the old headlight onto the new one. There's three ballasts on the headlight and each of them controls something different like the LED light which runs along the top and the bottom, the indicator, the high beam, the low beam and so on. Now originally I thought that the ballast would be the problem, but the ballast is still powering the LED light on the headlight. It's just part of the LED on the bottom is just burnt out. So fingers crossed these ballasts work on this new headlight. Okay, here we go, moment of truth, please work, please. Ignition on, side light, headlights all the way on, come on. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, it worked, oh my. Oh, what a relief, come on. Yes, so there we have it, two headlights now completely working. LEDs on the top and the bottom. Next thing we need to move on to is the coolant leak, which is actually coming out a plastic sort of coolant branch. If you remember in the last video, you can see I took it off here and it had a little split in the plastic part and also the rubber hose. Now, since then, I put the radiator pack back on thinking that I should be able to get to that part without removing the front end again. And I managed to in the end, but it was really fiddly. It would have been a lot easier with the rad pack off. But once I got the new coolant branch on, I could then connect everything back up, open the expansion tank, and I'm gonna fill it with water just in case there's any more leaks. I don't wanna be losing vital coolant. Okay, so far so good. I can't see any water leaks underneath the car, so we're much better than last time. This might be the first time we actually get to start the car and run it up to temperature, because before we had no coolant in it, and well, it's got that misfire, but I think if we just run it for a while, it might sort itself out. But that's me being hopeful, let's try it. Starts up, no problem. We do have an engine light, we'll suss that out towards the end. Obviously we've got an airbag light because, well, airbags, we've got TPMS light, obvious and hopefully this car will run up to temperature now. Come on, S3. See, at the minute, it idles completely fine. It's idling nice and steady, but if I give it a rev, then it comes back down. That's when the issues begin. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. Come on, S3. Now, after leaving it for a while and letting it warm up and every so often checking for leaks, 
the intermittent misfire just didn't seem to stop. So before I did anything, I went the old school way and got some injector cleaner and just poured that into the petrol tank just to see if that would help because I assume that this has got some pretty old fuel in. As soon as you rev it, it comes back down, it starts playing off. So with that not working, I turned to my code reader and that told me it had cylinder one misfire, a cylinder four misfire, a cylinder two misfire, and I'd also a random multiple cylinder misfire. So this is only leaving me with a few possibilities. And one possibility which I think is quite likely is the injectors what are in the inlet manifold. So this was the inlet manifold that was on the car and it was all cracked so we changed it. But in this inlet, you've got a set of four injectors on this sort of fuel rail here. Now, the inlet manifold that I bought for it actually came with the injectors on, so I just fitted them on. But these are the old ones. So I'm thinking, just to eliminate another thing, is change these injectors out of this one, put them in that one, and we'll try that. If that doesn't work, then possibly we could have an air leak, but if that doesn't work, then I don't know. So it's back on with the old injectors. Pretty easy to remove. You can do this from the top. Just disconnect the fuel rail and then pop it all out. Now, if this doesn't fix it, my next step would probably be the coil packs, as we did change the spark plugs before. And on goes the new but old injectors. Okay, I'm feeling skeptical, and if that's fixed it, then it was an easy fix, but nothing is ever easy. Let's see. Let's see if that works. I was just waiting for the fan to come on. I could see the uh, coolant temperature sensor getting to about 90 degrees, and it was worrying me because the fan never came on, but now it's came on. But since it's got to temperature, we seem to be good. I think, I think it might have fixed itself. <laughs> She's running sweet. She is running sweet. Whether those injectors did it or not, it, it seems to have sorted itself. Or maybe it just runs lumpy when it's cold for some reason. And that could be the coil packs. But she's running good now, come on. So there we go, one fixed engine, which was a really simple and easy fix. And something else that is pretty easy, creating a website using Squarespace, who have sponsored today's video. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. The parts I buy, the stuff I learn, I get it all online. The internet is open to a world of people. And that's why if your business doesn't have a website, your audience reach then becomes about this small. But Matt, websites are really hard to build. I can't do that. Sure you can. Anyone can build a website using Squarespace. It is literally that easy. Check it out. So once you've clicked the link in the description and you've gone to Squarespace, it's really easy to start creating your website. There's hundreds of templates to choose from. I'm going to start off with this one just to demonstrate. You can then drag and drop your own photos in there, change any text or buttons on the website. you pretty much got the free roll to do whatever you like. And on the left hand side we've got a bunch more tools like marketing and analytical tools. So when you need a website, you know exactly what to do. Click the link in the description box below or go to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong and that's gonna give you 10% off your first website or domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get the S3 back together. So the next step was to mount the wing brackets. I bought these aftermarket wings and they didn't have any brackets which actually mounted it to the car. So I bought the brackets from Audi directly and all I've got to do to mount these to the wings is rivet them on. There's one big bracket at the bottom and one smaller one at the top. And once these were on, you'd never know that this was not an OEM wing. And with the passenger side bolted on, it's time to do the driver's side.
Looking good, we have progress. Engine running, wings are on, bonnet is on correctly. Now, onto the bumper. We're all in agreement that the bumper looks pretty cool, but the, the grill, well, that's the letdown. But luckily for us, and luckily for Liam, and you guys as well, I've found a new grill. This time, with an Audi badge. 150 quid, straight off eBay. This is actually brand new as well. The Audi rings will go in the center here, so that will look sort of more OEM. The honeycomb is a little bit closer together, wise this is a little bit further apart, which exposed more of the sort of like inside of the rad pack here and also the crash bar. We're gonna have to paint this black anyway just to cover it up. But we can connect up all the washer pipes and everything as well. We've got them there and all the wiring. And then finally get that onto the car. Let's do it. So it's not only the grill that we've got to install, we've also got to install the washers for the headlights. I got a second hand one off eBay. Again, it's just two torque screws on the back of the bumper to install, and then the cover just clips onto the front of it. Next thing I'll do is route the washer pipes along the bumper. Then I'm gonna give the crash bar a coat of paint. And finally, install the front bumper back onto the Audi S3 which I'm still pretty impressed with the fitment on, being that it is an aftermarket bumper. And look at that, that grill has completely transformed that front end. Does that grill make that front bumper and the whole front end look? It looks so much better now. It is a good job we painted the crash bar behind it because now it's almost invisible, but that looks more sort of OEM plus with sort of the RS3 style front bumper. I've still got to bolt it all in and we've still got arch linings to go in, but I have played around with the bonnet and just to try and get it lined up, I think I've done... Well, I'm fairly happy with sort of the panel gap on the bonnet. It's not too bad at all. I think we've got it just about bang on. Now, pretty much every airbag possible has gone off on the interior of this thing. The passenger side airbag has gone off, which means we need to replace the full dashboard just to replace that airbag. The steering wheel airbag has gone, and the curtain airbags on each side, they're both gone as well. But before I even touch the airbags, this car is absolutely disgusting and filthy and no second guesses of why or how this car was crashed. So I've called Slicks, Chris, AKA, to come over and help me clean this whole thing out before we get onto this dashboard. So let's get to it. I'm gonna remove the front seats first. This is just gonna make it easier. One, for replacing the dashboard, and two, cleaning the whole interior. And that revealed one of many strange items which we found inside this S3. The seats are really easy to remove. There's just four bolts bolting it to the floor, and then about four electrical connectors that you need to unplug as well. And look at the state of the carpet. Alcohol, cigarettes, plastic cups, and other substances you'll see at well, some crazy type of parties. Mold, lighters, and, and even suspicious looking powder in the back. And to top that, dirty laundry. God knows what happened inside this car, but it smells like, well, a really good party. No wonder they crashed it. So we both went out this car with masks on and rubber gloves and started hoovering the carpet. And some stuff is gonna need extra attention, like this mold. Now all the cleaning products that we use to clean the car are available with the link in the description. I still cannot believe someone would treat an Audi S3 with such disrespect. But slowly, bit by bit, it was coming up really nice. And the smell was slowly dying off. And the leather on the seats came up so good as well. Now that is looking 10 times 
better. I can actually work in here now and not feel absolutely disgusting. So shout out to Chris for grafting away. We've still not put the front seats in yet and that is because we're about to do the dash. Which I actually have two of. But you'll find out why in the next video. Why well, I have two dashes for the Audi S3 and not one. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Ali, 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 Ali.